All right, and here's a look at the materials that come with the Instant Theme Kit Trenchworks. This is the fine brown ballast, the static grass burnt, my wooden duck boarding, some PVA white glue, and of course my bottle of realistic water. Last but not least, the brass etch razor wire. In addition, I'm going to need a paintbrush and a hobby knife to work with these, and of course, a base. For the demonstration, I'm going to use some cyanoacrylite uh, just to speed things up as I'm applying the materials here so that we can get through the video. Here we go. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is take some of the wooden duck boards. See they're nice and thin, small pieces. Just lay it out to decide how much room I want on each side of it. At 148th scale, which is what most uh, tabletop wargaming is, uh, these would be 6 inches wide, so I'm going to use 4 pieces to make a section of 24 inch wide trench boarding. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and push this closer to the edge so that I have more room over here to show off the uh, other materials. Now I have a couple of pieces here that I've just cut in half. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my cyanoacrylite just to make things quick and put down a line where I want to put these guys. And I am going to lay it off center a bit. Don't worry about the overhang, we're going to cut those off in a bit and I'll save the pieces so that I can use them later on as well. And I'm going to put a gap in here of about less than an eighth of an inch, just enough to make sure that it's clear there is a gap. All right, next I'm going to repeat the process, make a little line, thin layer of my glue. You can do this with the uh, PVA white glue that's included if you don't have any super glue or cyanarcolite sitting around the house, and the most hobbyists do. If you need to make a small adjustment, just take your hobby knife. Get that piece of wood back where you want it. That way you can get nice little gaps between these. Now I'm going to take another piece, cut it off center, so it's clearly an uneven pieces here. Get my glue out again, run another line, nice and thin. And this time I'm going to decide I want my seam obviously off-center from the other one, so I'm going to set that bad boy down and take the other piece come in behind make sure he's down again do the same sort of thing, I'm going to set these off off-center here make another line I want this one to be off center from either of the other two, so let's decide it's going to be there, close to the other one, but not lined up. I'm just putting that gap a little closer together. So these are my duck boards. Lead down, I'm going to press on them, make sure they've got a nice firm attachment. And that's it for the moment. I'm going to give that a minute to dry and come back and cut them up. Alright, the glue has dried on my duck boarding and I've got my cutting mat out. I'm going to go ahead and just turn the base over and from the back take the blade along the beveled edge or of course if you're working with a round lip you can just use the uh, guide there and make a few slow gentle cuts and just repeat this process a few times. If you press too hard you're likely to uh, uh, snap the wood and get a finish on the end that's less controlled. You can see as I'm cutting these they'll make nice small pieces for my second base and I always keep the scraps so that I can come back and do more with it later yet to find a use this piece of leftover duckboard. Alright, so in this case you can see I've got the smooth edges along the sides. Now a couple of things we can do to create some texture on here. Uh, the first of course is just to take your hobby knife, it's already got a bit of a wood texture, but if you want to exaggerate that a bit, just take your hobby knife, scrape along, scrape along, scrape, 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 scrape. My favorite method however is to get a brass brush a brass bristle brush. You can get these in most hobby shops for less than a dollar. Or I'm sorry, most hardware stores for less than a dollar. I'm just going to take that and in one direction 
press down nice and firm. Drag it one direction. So that's going to texture the wood for me. And then I can come in, create a few deeper furrows, maybe add a knot. The other thing I can do at this point is if I want my duck boards to look damaged, come in, chip them up, pick pieces out, uh, particularly along the edge, rough it up. So I'm just going to weather these up a bit and we'll come back. Alright, I am back with my base. I have weathered up the duck boards. Now I'm going to start applying the ballast. The kit comes with some PVA white glue, which is perfect for this. Creates a nice uh, flowing look to it, a little more organic. But because we're in a hurry today for the video, I'm going to use cyanoacrylate. It's going to make the uh, finished product look a little more hard edged, uh, but again, it's quick so that I can actually demonstrate where we go. I'm going to take a spare bit of paper, fold it in half to catch the spill over here, and I'm going to put very thin layers of glue down. On this side, I'm going to cover the whole bit and just sprinkle it directly out of the bag. Don't worry about a little bit of overflow. That'll be good in the long run. On the other side, I'm going to fill in along the edge all the way around because I'm going to add realistic water. I need to create a little reservoir for it. So I'm going to go all the way around the edges. See, I'm creating a little, little container here. Cover that. Shake off the excess. And now I can come back and add some more definition to that, a little bit more shape. By dividing it into two little pools here, I've created room for the realistic water. While the glue is still wet, reshape those a bit. that easy for applying a fine, fine brown ballast. I'm going to give this a minute to dry and come back and move on. And back again to apply some of the static grass. This time I'm definitely going to use my PVA white glue. Just going to put a few drops here and there. Static grass, in my opinion, looks a lot better if you do it in clumps. So I'm just going to put a couple of clumps for the moment. I might come back when the base is finished and add a bit more. Static grass, get a pinch, sprinkle it heavily over those, really get it in there. Press down gently. And again, I'm doing this over a folded sheet of paper so that I can capture the excess. There's my static grass applied and little clumps. And we'll be back in a minute for the next trick. Okay, before I move on to the realistic water, uh, at this point I'm going to add some color to the wood here to age it up a bit. You can do this just by mixing some black paint and water, um, whatever color paint you want, just to create a wash. I'm a lazy git, of course, so I'm going to take my secret weapon wash sewer water, apply it straight out of the bottle. and layer uneven across the boards and brush that around a bit. If it's too much, thin it with a bit of water. Just trying to age up the wood a bit. If you decide it's still too dark, you can come back with your brush in a bit and let some of the light wood color show through. Or dry brush it, of course, after it's dry. So now I've added some color to my duck boards there. They don't look quite as shiny and wood colored at this point. So, onto the realistic water. All right, here is the base that we have so far. You can see the two little channels I left for realistic water. 
I'm going to take my bottle. You do not need to shake the material. It's just going to introduce bubbles to it. Just hold it upside down. It'll start dripping on its own when it's got air out of it. And I am going to put little drops into the reservoirs I made. If you get a bubble, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. Take your brush. Work to pull it towards the edge. And normally it'll work itself right out. There we go. I'm also going to take a little bit of the realistic water and put it here between my duck boards. I want to make my boards look nice and wet too. If you've got it on the boards and you decide you don't want it there, you don't want the boards themselves to look wet, not a problem. Now that it's actually between the boards, you can take your finger just wipe it off the boards. And that's it. Of course, I have to wait for this to dry, and we'll come back. While the realistic water is drying, I thought I'd come back to our realistic razor wire here. This is, in fact, short tine razor wire and not, as so many products are, simply a wire wrapped around a wire. This is sharp, so watch your hands while you're handling it. Um, all you have to do to get off of the frame, and I've already removed a couple of rows here, uh, all you need to do to get off the frame is cut the frets between rows. Decide how many you want ahead of time. In this case, I'm going to use two rows. So I'm going to cut all the frets between two rows. The frets are a little line that just hold it in place so that when it's running through the etching machine, it doesn't come apart on us. And then I'm going to cut the end where it folds over. This is about five feet of continuous loop. So you'll have to decide the length you want. Now that I've got it cut off, it's nice and bent. Just straighten it out. Again, you can really see the razor tines here. So I'm then going to take the handle of my paintbrush, hold it at one end, and then just rotate the brush, holding the razor wire tightly, let it loop around. Get it caught up in my gloves, of course. Once that's done, pull it nice and tight, slide it down towards the end, pull it nice and tight, and you'll have a small coil of realistic short tine razor wire. At this point, I can glue that onto my base, I can create stands for it. Um, I like to paint the razor wire up before I put it onto, uh, or take it off of the frame rather, so normally I would have it painted at this point, even before I start cutting wanted to show it to you in the raw state. And I'll be back with pictures of the finished product as soon as everything finishes drying. And here we are again with the finished base, with the exception of some paint for the razor wire and the wash I put onto the duck boards. This is made using only the materials included in the Instant Theme Kit Trenchworks. If you have any questions, email mrjustin at secretweaponminiatures.com and I'll be happy to help.